This was decades before Elvis shook his hips, and that was considered dirty. This was a total and complete breakdown of society because of a magic mix, a mixture here of several things that we are starting to mirror. But the key was the average person felt hopeless. How did that happen? Well, the first thing that happened was they had to destroy faith in Germany. Well, they didn't have to, they just did. Back in World War I, the churches had become a political organ. The government, um, the government just went in and they told everybody that, oh, God's saying that you got to go fight World War I, and, and God's saying that we're going to be the victors. And so when it ended, and everybody, it was tragic, the church had no credibility because they had merged the church and the state into one political organ, German Christian movement. So people lost faith. They didn't believe it anymore. And then they moved into just sexuality of, of epic proportions, hedonism, free expression. They were actively encouraged. It, every, everything became cool except being moral. And it, a lot of it was packaged in women's rights. Uh, that's how they legalized prostitution. Women have a right to do that. And then in the cabaret, they started to openly mock religion, faith, everything. Everything that society once had considered moral, it had been mocked. It was the time of eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may all die. Another story that came up recently that I read, and I've been holding it because it bothered me. And until I saw the Atlanta story, I, I, I didn't know how I was going to share it with you. I was reminded of the Weimar Cabaret when I read a review from a Seattle paper of a theater show written by two, I think, two women in Seattle. And the show was mocking religion. Um, tea party goers, me, really everything, everything. And um, I read this review, and here's how the reviewer summed up my character. The prophet, because they're making fun of me and my religious views, the prophet, Glenn Beck, withdrew from public life as a TV soldier to the upper reaches of an empty high rise. He then continued, while cackling with glee as Beck wept, this is, the, this is the guy who's the reporter on this, cackling with glee as Beck wept, I worried briefly that this was Weimar Cabaret and laughter at his neurotic displays might come to seem in retrospect ill-advised. Maybe I'm wrong and I hope I am. But I have to tell you, my track record of direction has been really pretty good in the last five years. I'm asking you as a nation, as a citizen, look at the facts and see the direction we're headed. I showed you the economic news at the beginning of the program. I, I, I started with a plane crash. A state rep says, I wish Sarah Palin would have died. Had you even heard of that, really? Where's the outrage? Where's the shame? The shame. When you look at the economic news, isn't it at least worth considering what we've been talking about here? When I'm proven wrong, when Obama spends us to safety, then all the shows are making fun of me continually. I will make fun of me too. It will be a happy time. I'll go away. But no other time in the history of this planet does bigger and bigger government end well when it is coupled with the perversion of faith Elites and elite scientists. I mean, remember, Weimar was the heyday of science. Eugenics, science was critical to Germans at this period. And then commerce and financial struggle. When these are coupled with bigger, growing government, it's trouble. It doesn't work. It doesn't ever work. Trouble. Now, I've seen the news. And I'm going to give the president the benefit of the doubt. He can't say these things to you, but I can. But I don't know, other than that, I don't know how he can sit there and say the worst is behind us. Maybe it's just because he's, he doesn't think it'll get worse than 30,000 people out of a town of 40,000 going to a parking lot, standing in a line for a waiting list for 445 government-subsidized houses two years down the road. 
It doesn't get much worse than pure hopelessness. And people, I fear, are becoming more and more hopeless. Don't. Check yourself. I read in the Wall Street Journal the other day about a 52-year-old mechanic named Michael Hatchell. He said that he turned down more than a dozen offers while he was unemployed for 59 weeks. He chose to take the government handout. People are choosing to be dependent on the government over picking themselves up and taking less and resetting and starting all over again. Is that hopelessness? Is that dependency? Is that the lack of faith? Or is it the beginning of eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we may all die? Mortgage bailouts, teacher bailouts, financial bailouts, insurance bailouts, auto bailouts, extended unemployment for 99 weeks, more welfare, more food stamps. Where does it end? I mean, look, I understand people fall on hard times. We have these time periods. They always come. People fall in hard times. But the more we don't let people fail, or the people who have done things wrong, the more we don't let them face the consequence of their own action, the more we make them dependent, and the more risky behavior becomes. The more we rob a man of his spirit and his pride, the more trouble we're in. I want you to watch for three things. I want you to watch for hopelessness. Misplaced hope in government. Misplaced go. I want you to watch for a perversion of faith. We've talked about it on this program. It is social justice and collective salvation. And then I want you to watch for the possibility of deflation into hyperinflation, the selling and buying of our own bonds. That too was done in Weimar. That's why you have to understand these things. I know that you are busy. I know that the last thing you need is homework from me. But you must educate yourself. If we don't know history, we won't be able to predict the future. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you we are repeating many of the same mistakes. This generation of Americans, heck, the last generation of Americans, don't know what hyperinflation even means like they did in Weimar. We can't understand it. What was that possibly like? Well, let me tell you something. Here's what happened. Germany was ordered to pay for reparations after World War I. They didn't have the money. They begged people, don't make us pay this. So they decided instead to print it all. Well, when they did that, hyperinflation eventually kicked in. The money inflated so fast that it was almost instantly worthless. People would literally get paid at work. They would pull a big like Brink's truck up to the office and they would pay you in cash. People would go out and buy things and then return to work. Two, three, four hours later, they would pay you again and you would go out because the prices would rise. One German writer told the story of two women carrying laundry baskets filled with banknotes. A crowd gathered around the store window. They put down the baskets full of money to go look. When they came back, the banknotes, the money, still there, but the baskets were gone. Another German recounts that he stopped into a cafe for a, a cup of coffee. He sat down, noticed the price was 5,000 marks. He sat down, grabbed a paper, drank his coffee, sat there for about an hour reading the paper. When he went to pay the bill, the coffee was now 8,000 marks because the mark had lost that much value in an hour. This, these are bank notes, th these are stamps from the Weimar Republic. They put them on the dollars, the marks, because the paper wasn't even worth anything after the, they started doing this. Then they just started rubber stamping them. One more story on this. An American went over to Germany and he left a dollar tip at a restaurant. It was such a staggering amount to the German waiter that the waiter actually took that dollar home, called a family meeting together to figure out what is the best thing we can do to invest this dollar. America the economic laws do not stop at our shore. We are not immune from hyperinflation or deflation. It's coming. But in our arrogance, we must think that we're immune because we are mirroring the Weimar Republic by monetizing our debt and continuing to spend when we can't afford it. These three paintings over here, these three paintings I painted about a year ago, 
They, I painted.